civilization. Humans have been on Earth for approximately 200,000 years, but population growth, particularly in the last few centuries, has been stratospheric. As you can see from this graph, the world population 10,000 years ago is estimated at between 1 and 10 million people. It wasn't until the last few centuries that it really started to rocket upwards. Today's population is touching 7.1 billion, and the UN projects that by 2100, there'll be 10 billion people on the planet. And it's probably no surprise that such a vertiginous level of growth starts to put pressure on our finite resources. Take the most basic of human requirements, water. According to the UN, water use has been growing at more than twice the rate of population increase in the last century. But it's not just the water that we drink or use to bathe in that matters. For instance, the UN estimates that it takes up to 13,000 litres of water to produce just one kilogram of grain-fed beef. So as the population rises and the pressure on our resources increases, are we headed for disaster? Well, with me to discuss this is Stephen Emmett, author of the book 10 Billion, in which he argues that we're teetering on the edge of disaster, and the science and environmental journalist Fred Pierce. Um, first of all, Stephen Emmett, um, what's the one thing that scares you the most? Well, I think, it, to put it into context of, of what, uh, what, not what necessarily scares me, but I think the things that we face uh, is the fact that there will be 10 billion of us um, living on the planet at some point in the next 80 or so years. And that matters because um, our growth and our activities, our behaviour, uh, are the drivers of every, just about every global problem we face, whether it's climate change or land degradation or degradation of ecosystems. And every one of those problems is set to get worse as we continue to grow towards this 10 billion number. Uh, and this book essentially is suggesting that we may as well you know, party and then all go to hell in a handcart, that actually it's too late for us to do anything that's actually going to save us? Well, what, the, what I say in the book is that I think we can do something, but I just don't think we will. I think, you know, radical behaviour change at a global level can solve us, for, yeah. can, can solve the work or mitigate us against the worst. But there's nothing cases. that individually we can do as human beings, you know, the, the idea of a five minute shower rather than an eight minute shower, you know, you, you, what you're saying is all that is just small beer. Well, if you do small changes, you're going to end up with just small results. Um, Fred Pierce, I mean, you, you have a much more optimistic uh, uh, view of it, that we're not necessarily consigned to oblivion. Absolutely. I think one, the most remarkable fact that I've come across is that women today are having half as many children as their mothers had. Their mothers had, five, had, had about five children on average globally, not just the rich world, the whole world. Now it's under two and a half. We are going to have peak population by later this century. And that means that we are diffusing the population bomb, not the consumption bomb, which I agree is a big issue, but we're making progress. But, you know, you look at this and there's page after page, I mean, you just, you're hanging mm. your head in shame in a way, don't you? There are a lot of very dangerous problems that we face, and I absolutely agree that there are big problems. But I'm an optimist about the solutions. We've been here before. 40 years ago, everybody said, how can we feed twice as many people. We're going to double the world's population in 30 years. How can we double food production? We did. Yeah, we did. There are, I don't want to be sort of Panglossian about it, but there are, te there are technological uh, you're fixes Panglossian, out there. Maybe you're Malthusian. Let's have a look at this. Give us your uh, best graph, please, to give us your biggest bit of evidence. Well, I don't think there's one bit of evidence, but one that I think sums up much of, our, of the problems that we have and, and will continue to face is the rise of CO2 in the atmosphere. And the reason why I, I mentioned that, that, that our, our, these global problems are going to continue to increase as we continue to grow, one of, just one of the reasons is if we look at CO2. And what we can see is that CO2 in the atmosphere uh, has grown dramatically as we've continued to grow as a consequence of our use of oil, coal and gas, of our expanding uh, agriculture uh, and our general increasing consumption yeah. in stuff. And the reason why that... Uh, and it look, we look absolutely set to see another three billion of us continue to consume uh, and produce CO2, CO2 emissions ju uh, as, as, the, as the current so, seven billion of us, because we've known about the CO2 problem for so, 30 years, so, and yet so we, CO2 keeps going yeah, up. So the idea is we might know about these things, but we're not prepared to take uh, any kind of proper global action. We haven't, but the good news is we do know what to do. But we don't do it. 
No, we've, right. we've got a big political problem. But we, we, we know how to stop the CO2 emissions going up. It's, but the it's, problem is that by the time we actually get around to making a decision, look at, look at what's happened. I mean, you look mm. back to Kyoto and all sorts of other uh, conferences that failed, mm. that we're not going to do it, are we? Well, that's true. But well, we, 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 oh, we will or we won't. We'll okay. see. But what I will say is that it's not a population issue. Right. Because the population is, is well, going to level your, off. Let, it's let, a consumption well, let issue. Well, let me see your, let, let's see your, yeah, as a consumption issue, we want mm. to talk about that. But let, let's, see your, let's see your graph yeah. now. Okay, tell us about this. That is really dramatic. That shows you how women today are having half as many children as their mothers and grandmothers have. That surely is really good news if you're worried about population. It's a good news, but actually, if the CO2 consumption is so, and the emissions is so massive, we're, we're, we're living in a world that's not worth living in. Is that what you're saying? Um, I was partly the. the I think that e even if we, that we never produce another child, with seven billion of us, we're still going to be in trouble. The other thing about Fred's graph there is that it is true, and we've known since the 1960s, that fertility rate has declined. But you can see from Fred's graph the rate of, the, 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 the rate, the, of, yeah. the rate of, of childbearing has declined. But that, is, that graph is levelling off. And even if, on our current rate of reproduction, if we continued with that, because that graph is levelling off, there would be 28 billion of us by the end of this no, century. You no, 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 we're, we're levelling off at two oh, children per woman, which is the replacement let, let, let's just Let's just look right to the end of this book, and you were talking about asking one of the right, brightest and rash, most rational scientists to know what he would do about it. And he said, teach my son how to use a gun. Are you suggesting that w the survivalist mentality, the kind of Cormac McCarthy, the road, that's what it's going to come to? Well, I think the reason why he said that is that I th that he saw his son when his son was a, probably an, an, an adult facing difficult times potentially, and uh, that he might not be around and would like to see be, be able to see that his son could uh, probably uh, defend himself in in pretty hostile times potentially. But that's not your advice. It's not my advice. But that's the scary bit about this this, this doomsday stuff is that it doesn't help us reach solutions. It encourages people yeah, to head for the hills, take a gun and, and, and take it out on the rest of us. I don't, that's not the world I want. I want a world of solutions. Thank you both very much indeed. Well, where is the most corrupt country?